Hello everyone, I'm back again for another video. Um, after yesterday, my life expectancy is probably now a few days shorter, and I also have a pretty terrible sunburn. Won't even tell you guys where, but it's not good. So, with all that in mind, um, let's uh, try and overlook the events of yesterday and get into another video. I think just to give you guys an update on the general state of the channel, what I'm probably going to do is make more conceptual videos until I think June 1st, because that's about when I get back to my actual home home where I have a good camera. And then at that point, what I'll actually start doing is start making, um, you know, interview prep videos where I actually go through practice problems and go ahead and try and solve those in a way that is a bit more, uh, you know, palatable and um, deep than what I hope other channels have been doing. Okay, so let's get into this one. All right, so hopefully this video is going to be relatively quick, and it's all going to be on the following three topics, which are going to be polling, web sockets, and server-side events. So if you haven't heard of these before, they all basically fall under the category of real-time updates. In a lot of systems design interview questions, you're going to encounter a bunch of applications that are going to need you to be sending real-time updates to a client in one form or another. That includes things like chat applications, like Messenger or WhatsApp, um, ride sharing applications like Uber because you kind of have to know where your driver is at, at all times. And so generally speaking, we have this need to be able to kind of propagate all of these updates from, you know, the server, which is actually holding the state or perhaps the database where the server is pulling from it, and then going ahead and propagating that to our actual end user device, which is either going to be a smartphone or a laptop or something like that. So anyway, we have a few options of doing this, and although generally there's probably a better solution for this answer, it's important that we understand why that's the best solution, and kind of the differences between the options that we have here. Okay, so first off, we have polling. This is kind of the naive implementation. So as we know, um, there's something called making HTTP requests, and HTTP request is basically any time you're going to go ahead and from your client device, um, make any request to a server. So that request could be to get information or to give it new information to put into a database. Um, so anyway, polling is basically saying I'm going to make a get request to the server every X amount of seconds. So, you know, every five seconds, you know, tell me if this baddie on Instagram DM'd me back. Guess what? She didn't. I'm going to be sitting there all day waiting. Obviously, this is not good because if we have a ton of smartphones all polling one server, that is going to overload them, especially if there's no new information. Um, it's just going to be a waste of compute, and we obviously don't want to be doing that. So, kind of the next iteration of this strategy of getting real-time uh, updates was going to be long polling. So, as opposed to the typical polling, which just goes ahead and basically hammers your server every few seconds, Long polling makes an HTTP request in the same exact way that polling does. However, what the server basically will go ahead and do is say, if I have new information, I'm going to return it. And if I don't have information, I'm going to basically store your request on uh, the server for a little bit. And if at some point new information comes in, I'm going to go ahead and respond to you. So in this way, the client can basically make an HTTP request and then not hear back for a decent amount of time. Once it does hear back, the client is then going to go ahead and um, kill that HTTP connection it had made with the server because now it has the information. And if it wants more information, as one often tends to do in these types of applications because it tends to be a repeat process, it's going to establish another long pole. Okay, so what are the pros and cons of this? Well, the pros are that this is pretty easy to implement because you're basically just issuing a GET request um, as a long pole, and most servers have support for this. So that's pretty well taken care of. That being said, it also has a few cons. Uh, the biggest thing is that it's only one directional. Um, if you want to go ahead and get that information from the server to the client and then send more information back, you have to actually issue a separate HTTP request, which really isn't a huge deal, but it's just something to keep in mind. Another thing is that you are probably going to be putting a lot of excess load on the server. Why is that? Well, every single time you have to reestablish a new HTTP connection via a long polling, you are effectively taking up some resources on the server to do so. And so as a result, by kind of killing and then reestablishing these connections, uh, this is a less efficient process than some of the other alternatives that we'll see afterwards. And then finally, if you are long polling and you have a couple of browser tabs open at once, what may happen is that those two tabs might be you know, doubly getting the information, and that's either inefficient or it could lead to race conditions where you're getting information out of order. So there's something to keep in mind there. Okay, 
Moving on, we have web sockets. So web sockets, unlike long polling, are a fully bi-directional connection between the client and server. You basically go ahead and establish a typical HTTP connection, which then gets upgraded to a WebSocket connection, and from there you can send information both from client to server and also server to client. So this has a few pros and cons, and we're going to go through all of them. Uh, keep in mind, another thing I should probably mention is that WebSockets are each kind of corresponding to a port on the server, so a server can hold about 65,000 WebSockets at one time, because that's about how many free ports there are. So just keep that in mind if it ever comes up in an interview. So anyway, let's go through pros. Um, the pros are that you have bi-directional communication, which means I don't need to be making new HTTP requests to go ahead and serve content back to my server. This is really great for something like a chat app, where you're both going to be writing messages and reading messages. And so obviously, if you want that bi-directional bi communication, WebSockets are really nice for you. Additionally, WebSockets do something cool where once you establish that additional WebSocket um, request with a certain amount of headers, the headers are not going to be sent again on every single message. So this lowers the network overhead that you're actually going to be have uh, that you're actually going to be having when messages are sent both from client to server and server back to the client. That being said, there are a few cons here as well. First of all, there's lower support for WebSockets on older browsers. Obviously, that being said, though, as you know, they become more mature of a technology, um, that kind of becomes less and less of an issue. Another thing is that keeping all of these persistent connections with servers uh, may be overkill for infrequent data changes. For example, um, instead of like Facebook Messenger, what if I was running a dashboard and I knew that information was probably only going to be coming in every 30 minutes? It would probably be overkill if I had all of my client devices uh, keeping a persistent connection with our server as opposed to just using uh, a polling once every 30 minutes. That would probably be better in that case. Another issue which is a bit more niche but I've come across it in some of the reading that I've done on this topic is the thundering herd problem. And this is kind of basically saying that imagine we have, you know, who knows, like um, 500,000 WebSocket connections and those are spread across a bunch of application servers and then one of those application servers were to go down. Well, now we have to go ahead and start rerouting all of our WebSocket connections to different application servers, obviously trying to balance them relatively consistently. But the issue is, since there's a decent amount of overhead in actually establishing these WebSocket connections, we can, we can end up basically um, you know, hammering our servers and creating all of these initializations for WebSockets. And as a result, it can either you know, take our servers down or just respond failures on trying to initialize all these WebSocket connections, and it could lead to cascading failures. This, this doesn't happen with long polling, for example, because you know if you have a load balancer up between all of your application services and long polling is basically just saying just route my request to one of the backends, um, the load balancer is going to do that routing automatically for you. You don't have to kind of um, manually reroute everything like you might in a WebSocket configuration and that can kind of lead to issues and additional complexity. Okay, finally we have server sent events. Server sent events, basically, um, going back, WebSockets were two directional. Server sent events going back are now one directional, only from servers to clients. And what you do is the client goes ahead and registers for events from the server. Um, this is really useful for things where basically you only have one directional communication, but you just need it in real time. So stock ticker updates, you know, newsfeed updates from Facebook or Twitter, uh, notifications, all can be useful with um, server sent events. So basically here, um, unlike long polling, server sent events actually you know, also keeps a persistent connection, and that's similar to WebSockets. But in addition to the functionality of WebSockets, as far as persistent connection goes, um, server sent events will actually handle uh, reestablishing you know, closed connections if they were to go down for some reason. So you know, it just takes a little bit of complexity away from the application, as opposed to having to use something like a heartbeat to determine if a WebSocket connection is down and then manually trying to reestablish it. That being said, there are some cons, the main one being that it's only single directional communication. Um, if you want to use server side events and then additionally send information back to the server, you would have to use separate HTTP requests. And then additionally, like WebSockets, a lot of concurrent connections that are redundant if there aren't really many events being sent can just be additional load on a server if they're not needed. So basically, server sent events are pretty useful. They're kind of a more limited set of options than webhooks, but I think they also are technically slightly lower overhead and a little bit easier to set up. So there is a case to be made for using them, 
um, for kind of some of the examples that I gave on this slide. That being said, in conclusion, in an actual systems design interview, it's probably fine to just go ahead and say, oh, we have real-time updates, I'm just going to use WebSockets. That being said, don't be surprised if your interviewer then says to you, well, why WebSockets as opposed to, I don't know, long polling or service sent events? And this is kind of where these topics would come in, where you can basically just go ahead and say, well, I want this bi-directional communication. I like that you're not resending all of these headers all the time, so there should be lower overhead, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so basically, again, I'm just trying to, to dive deeper into the trade-offs, both for my own knowledge and yours, in order to be able to kind of justify all the choices that you're making when um, doing a systems design interview. All right, guys, so like I said, I kind of gave the channel itinerary for the next two weeks. Please uh, subscribe to me so I you know, don't start losing faith that people care about these videos because I am a narcissist. And uh, yeah, I look forward to see you guys in the next one.